Trump issued a statement claiming that the vice president had agreed that he could determine the outcome of the election, despite the fact that the vice president had consistently rejected that position. Let's look at what the president said in his statement. Quote, the New York Times report regarding comments Vice President Pence supposedly made to me today is fake news. He never said that. The Vice President and I are in total agreement that the Vice President has the power to act. Mr. Jacob, how did the Vice President's team react to the statement from the President that the Vice President could take an active role in determining the winner of the presidential election? Um, so, uh, we were shocked and disappointed uh, because whoever had written and put that statement out, it was categorically untrue. Hmm. That was something that really stood out to me yesterday. I mean, we, we know Trump lies right. on a regular basis. Yes. And, and you can probably see how that statement went about. Trump said, we're in agreement on this. And Pence probably did not respond to him. Mm -hmm. And Trump took that as a affirmative right. when it wasn't. Uh, but I, 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 again, there's so much that we're seeing that go to like the consciousness of guilt. Mm -hmm in this that they, they knew they were wrong they told him that what he was doing wouldn't hold up in court they told him um uh, eastman had some crazy idea that the supreme court wouldn't touch the case at one point um it's just it's 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 insane and we had some news that broke yesterday during mm -hmm. well actually the, it began during our show but we were both busy doing a show mm -hmm. so we missed that um uh, January 6th committee announced that they would like to speak with Jenny Thomas. That's right. Jenny Thomas responded by saying to the uh, the Daily Caller, I can't wait to clear up some misconceptions. Misconceptions, yes. I look forward to talking with them. <clears throat> so please and thank you, uh, Miss Jenny Thomas. Um, and we've got like some excerpts from the actual letter. Um, it's a please and thank you letter. It's a yeah. very, 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 very polite right. type letter. Um, community calendar music here. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, here uh, here's what the, the letter had to say. The select committee has recently obtained information regarding the activities of John Eastman and the committee believes you likely have information relevant to our investigation and we would like to request an interview with you to discuss your knowledge of certain events and activities following the November 2020 presidential election. They go on to say, uh -huh. We respect your privacy and our questions will be limited to issues related to January 6th, the activities that contributed to or influenced in events on January 6th, and the transfer of power after the presidential election. We are specifically investigating the activities of President Trump, John Eastman, and others as they relate to the Constitution and certain other laws, including the Electoral Count Act that is set out that set out the required process for the election and the inauguration of the president. And they end by saying, we would like to meet with you soon, but we also would like to accommodate your schedule. We propose meeting on January or July 6th, 7th, or 8th of 2022. Please and thank you. Okay. So we'll, we'll wait and see if uh, Jenny Thomas comes in for a meeting. Or she she's going to be under oath. Or she could have a vacation planned and she can't. Oh, I, I hope she's under oath. I, know, I, sometimes they do these things not under oath. Yeah. And I, do, I noticed yesterday, I, I don't, the, the witnesses yesterday, they had them sworn in. I don't recall them doing that with the previous witnesses. Um, I believe they did on Thursday night, last Thursday night. Okay. Yeah. I did, I, 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 in my head, I didn't recall that, that portion of it, yeah. but I assumed, I mean, I assume they're all under oath. Yeah. But I, we actually saw them. Uh, right. put their hands up and take the oath and the other thing that came up yesterday that i thought was interesting was the during the first hour of the mm -hmm. hearing the justice department requested interview transcripts critical to investigation from the january 6th committee right uh what they said is it is now readily apparent that interviews the select committee conducted are not just potentially relevant to our overall criminal investigation but likely are relevant to specific prosecutions that have already commenced hmm. that's big yeah it is that's big uh, given the overlap that the select committee, um, given the overlap, it's critical that the select committee provide us with copies of the transcripts of all of its witness interviews. Uh, that is signed by Matthew Graves, Attorney General, of Washington D.C. or U.S. Attorney for Washington D.C. Uh, Keith Polite, I believe, uh, Criminal Division, and Matthew Olson, who is uh, the Assistant Attorney General for the National Security Division. So mm -hmm. those are the those are the big guys who are prosecuting these cases. Absolutely, that's a big, big. As as Joe Biden would say, it's a big effing deal. Mm -hmm. 